so in this video now we are going to learn that for loop so how for loop is going to work we will try to understand so here that syntax is for i in range of 5 so it's basically it's going to print that from 0 to till 4 as we know that range start with 1 so if we need that range to not start with 0 i wanted to specify to start with 1 not with the 0 so here we can put that a start position and this will be in the position. So if we run, now we can see that it's a started with one, not with the zero. And we see in both the condition, it's doing increment by one. So suppose now I wanted to do increment by two. Okay, and I start with one. So I can put that a start with one. Okay, and then increment by two. And then we can execute that. Now we can see that it's a started with one and three. Okay, so we have to first start position, then end position, and then how much increment we need. We need to specify in this format if we need to do any specific change that about that increment. Then it will work in this way. So I hope you understand that how that range is working and how we can do that starting position. We can change in position and increment step. So now we we'll move to next part. So now suppose if I define one variable that's equals to hello. And execute this now. I'm going to do that loop on this one for i in x. Then I will do that print of i. So now what is doing? It's a started as we know that index start with that. It's a storing that with 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. That's why it's looping on this one on x with their index. And index 1, whatever that value is there, it's going to print give to back to us so displaying first time it's on zero it's going to give us h then e then ll and then o so then we can do that loop on a string as well so that we got now here so we can use on the list so when we will work on list then we'll try to understand that how on a string and all the other possibility how it's going to work so for time being now we'll try to understand that other things that just like break continue so those things we'll try to understand so suppose now i am going to copy this one same now i need to put that break statement in this one so if i put that if i equal equals to e and then what i need i wanted to break that so when e going to print after this it's need to go out of that loop how we understand that in while loop so what is doing first time it's print that h and then it's breaking that loop because we found that e then it's break that loop and it's went out that's why nothing is printing so now if i go ahead and try with that l and then we can do that so now we can see that it's printed first to h and e and then when where it found that first l it's just break that loop and it's went out of this but suppose now i wanted to skip that E and then I wanted to work, then how we can go ahead and do that. So let's try it here. So now I wanted to skip that E and then wanted to print that. So there is one other variable that called continue. So we see that it's printed that only E part is got a skip, but where all other things are there, it's printed fine. So now if we go ahead here and we try with similarly with that in place of e l because we have duplicate of this one so now we can try that out so we can see that where all it's found that l is a skip those and it then it's printed that other value so in this way break and continue will work so in short if we go and divide what is the difference between break and continue so break whenever condition will satisfy it takes us out of that loop but continue will what it can do it will just skip that condition and then it will execute that loop it's going to complete that loop but break it's not going to complete that loop so based on our condition somewhere we can use that break somewhere we can use that continue now one other thing is there suppose if i put that for i in x and then i don't want to print do any any operation i don't want to do so then is one value that called pass if you pass that then it will be executed successfully if you not pass this value 
and then we will try to do execute this one then we get that syntax error because end of loop while passing so something need to be do if we passing that loop we have to put that some statement or else it's not going to work so that one keyword pass it's going to make that loop to be executed successfully it's not going to throw any alert for this one now apart from this now we have that for loop also we have else part so now if i go ahead and copy this one and we can print that else so as we know if i put it here else and then if i go back and do that print repeated then i will get that syntax error because else is not at the correct position so now we need to correct it out so that's why whenever we will go ha uh, with like this operation then we going to use the other id that called pycharm visual studio a spider so whoever prefer that we can go at the, there then benefit of that id that we can go ahead and we can see that it displaying red color there if we go and execute there but now i am using jupyter why because it's very easy and convenient to understand that how that next part is working and for starting or doing debug it's better to use this one so for beginning purpose i am using that jupyter later we will go and use that other id so now we will try to execute that so now see that else part is also got executed and it's printed loop completed so i hope you like this video oh sorry i forgot one more thing uh, we have to understand that nested loop also so what is that nested loop so we'll try to understand that for i in range of 5 and now again i can call that for j in a range of 3 and then i will print that i comma j okay so nested loop is nothing but calling one loop inside that loop is called nested loop sometimes we need that nested loop as well so now we we'll try to understand how that going to work so somewhere i did that mistake where is that for okay so here i forgot to put it i my bad okay so now we got that it's executed fine so now how it's going to loop we can try to understand that so for outer loop it is going to run a start with zero and it's going to run till four so we can see that first one we printing i and then second one we try to print that j so we can see that i it's a started with zero and it's going minimum point is zero and maximum point is four so okay so this one is working but we getting that multiple times so that all those row how so now this one first time it's executed for the zero so we can see we have zero three times so first time it's zero and j in range of three so this also going to start with zero so i equals to when zero j will go and print that for zero then still it's going to work then it's incremented by one then it's found one then j in three yeah it's correct so it's printed one but still that i value is zero it's again it's went and printed two again it's went and print went for three then it's found it okay it's loop going to execute so this loop is got break now it's came out of this loop and then it's went to that outer loop first loop or we can say outer loop or inner loop so it's come to outer loop so outer loop we found that i value is still now zero so now it's start with that one so it started with one so first time it's print that it's one went with one then it went inside of this one then j again equals to zero because it's again going to start with that first value zero so it's again went zero so one zero again one 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 two similarly it's going to print for till that four one and two so i hope you understand that nested loop as well please let me know if you have any doubt i will try to explain that in better way creating that some in word and putting that value how it's going to work So that's all for today. Thank you.